All right, everybody, it is right now episode number 14. <laughs> Got that right after yesterday. Micah, good Cheers. to have you on, my friend. I like your mug. Thank you very much. Uh, this is my favorite mug. Um, I like it because it's understated. Nice. It just says you rock. Like there's, it's not like world's best whatever. It's not like exclamation like, point or anything. It's just yeah, you rock. Like, you're the best at everything. It's just like yeah, you rock. And, then, you and rock. I, I really like that. Does it got like a matte finish to it too? It, it does. Like, yeah. Kind of touch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's kind of cool. It's like um, it's it. like Bark's root beer. Like on the can, their slogan is like since whatever year they were started, uh -huh. it's good. <laughs> that's just I it. Like, like that. just it's good. And I'm understated. Like, you're right. Yeah, you know. Sure. Yeah, it's yeah, it is good. I'm not overstating <laughs> it. Uh, Micah, you are, whoa, got a lot of control there. In the <laughs> I'm just excited to have you on here. Today. Yeah. Um, Micah was supposed to be on here next week and like four o'clock yesterday, you were told like, oh, it's going to be tomorrow instead. <laughs> and it was yeah. like, oh, whoops, sorry. Uh, we got like a bunch of people sick and miscommunication. So thanks for being so flexible. Um, yep. but Micah, you specifically wanted to talk about some noodler things. Micah's on our fulfillment team. Damn. So he is there packing orders with a slightly ridiculous amount of care. And, uh, you've been on our team for two and a half years now at this point Something like three, three years in may wow that's wild man yep. well uh micah rocks clearly and uh you have kind of taken an interest probably deeper than most <laughs> with obscure hard to find noodlers ink colors yeah would that be fair to say yes okay so let's talk about that um well i actually started here on. sampling inks so my right. first kind of like I don't know, baptism into the, the fountain pen world was just ink. I, I knew nothing about pens and I was just sampling all these inks. I can and... see a meme of like Micah being baptized <laughs> in like a bottle of Noodler's ink. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, you come in and see like, you know, Jerobon Stormy Gray and you're like, whoa, sparkles in ink, this is wild. Yeah. And then the first time that uh, you see like an Apache sunset, like a shading ink and you're like, whoa all of this nonsense yeah um and so i just started digging into noodler's inks because i really liked the labels i liked they were just sure. super interesting and he There's had a lot of them because like, you were sampling so you were open up you were seeing physically actually every bottle as opposed to like when you're just pulling them off the shelf mm -hmm. you know it's just they all look the same just like, seeing like a stamp and being right. like oh interesting yeah yeah so i just started looking into noodler's inks and thanks to the wonderful world of our fountain pens, found this like master list of like hundreds of inks that he used to make for yeah. regional exclusives or retailer exclusives. And I, I just started- I wanna say he's them. made like 400 or something, somewhere around there. It's like, wild. Like yeah. we currently have, I don't know, 130 maybe, 140, something like mm -hmm. that. So he's made way more than we've ever even offered. Yeah, so I just, I don't know, I just started digging into like, there were literally days where I would just like mm. Google each ink name to see if I could like somewhere out in the world somebody okay. had a bottle of Queen Victoria's Mint. And never, even, old, never even heard of that one. An old UK exclusive. Wow. And just, you know, found found a few here and there. I, th I only have about uh, 30 or so of them, but... Okay. That, that's still a lot. <laughs> it like, is. That's still a good number. <laughs> They're like covering my desk. I see you didn't bring 30 with you today. I didn't, So no. is this like a select few, like the weirdest, coolest ones that you love? Yeah, these are the ones. This is a, uh, a Swedish exclusive called Stockholm Indigo. Um, just a super nice purple um, that I really liked, but that one, that one took me a really long time to find. Interesting. Um... I also really liked, uh, this one's called Prussian Blue, not to be confused with uh, diamines, but it was a German market exclusive. Hmm. Um, and yeah, I I only ever have seen this one bottle of it, so I'd, it took wow. me a long time to find this as well. Wow. Um, so where are you finding these, like eBay or Fountain Pen Network or like wh where, yeah, wherever? Little, yeah, <laughs> anywhere that I can, like emailing people, like, <laughs> hey, I saw that like five years ago you had this listed on your website. Do you have like one bottle of it lying around because I really nice. want it? Or okay. yeah, on Fountain Pen Network, um, our Fountain Pen, just and anywhere that I could possibly find them. Okay, I, would, I gotcha. Yeah. You're being resourceful. Yeah, and then the, the last one, this one you can actually still get. It's a Canadian exclusive, but it's called Blue Upon the Fields of Abraham. Oh, yes. Kind of a notorious oh, yes. color for his one. exclusives. It's beautiful. I think um, it was reformulated a couple of years ago, too. So depending on when you got this. I think this is the reformulation. It's the reformulation. I think yeah. I have the original. Formula, oh. Which is like, it's almost like paint. It's almost like acrylic paint. Yes. It's like so thick. <laughs> it's just crazy. Yeah. Um, awesome. So that's Very a, cool. a few so, ones I brought. So what is your favorite Obscure Noodler's Inc. Do you have like one favorite? I really, Blue Upon the Fields of Abraham is yeah. definitely a favorite. Because it's just, it's it's just beautiful. It's kind of like a it blue is. black that kind of leans a yeah, little more on. I do, yeah. I have oh. a nice swab book. 
So oh, Mike is just, he's wanting to show all the things you can't get anymore. <laughs> this is the uh, Nem Marmon Nemesign word card, which I think, you know, proved the concept for the new coloring that we have. Um, and uh, we, we got these word cards and I think we got like a hundred of them and they were gone and then they discontinued it. <laughs> and it was like, what? It was like $4. It was yeah, insane. Were, and uh, you can't get them anymore. They were incredibly popular. And they were. Yeah. And uh, I think I hoarded like three or four of them. <laughs> I think I have a couple, <laughs> but anyway. Yep. Um, cool. Well, I, I knew that you were gonna be on here today. So I pulled out some of my obscure Noodler's Inks because one of the cool things about Micah is he's like a really positive guy that has like very genuine reactions and he's very like <laughs> smiley and laughing. So I think he'll get really excited at some of the weird ones that I have here. So I just wanted to talk about those because yeah. um, I thought that you might genuinely enjoy them. Um, so some of them I have are like ones that you're gonna be pretty familiar with. Like I have, you know, Noodler's Pasternak and Essenin and just some like UK and Russians that we used to carry that we don't really have anymore. Um, some of them, what we would do, I can't even keep straight anymore, to be quite honest with you. Dostoyevsky, Rachmaninoff, Kuprin. I think there um, were 12 Russian inks total. Okay, I think we carried four of them at some point. And so I don't have them. I mean, I guess we could take them in the bottles. I just don't know if I can. All right, the boxes. Um, I'll just try to go through them and if there's anything particularly interesting to you. Of course, I have like American Aristocracy, which is not that crazy. Suffragist Carmine. Um, uh, let's see here. I have like various formulations of black swan and Australian roses because it's like shifted a little bit here and there over the years. So every time we get one and it's like, oh, this is a, this is a kind of a weird, this is like super purple. I've like kept that. I don't know why, but I have um, Law. I think that's L. Lawrence. That's nothing too crazy. That's the one that you were like, I can't show you this. So I have a couple that I think are going to be pretty interesting. I have Noodler's Violet Vote, which oh, uh, wow. is kind of interesting. So let me... Uh, I always like to open my Noodler's bottles with a pocket knife just because I it's too easy to tear the, the flaps off the boxes. So there is Violet Vote, which um, was formerly Iraqi Indigo, um, which was somewhat controversial. Uh, <laughs> this is around the time of like, you know, the Iraq War and all that kind of stuff when it first got liberated. Um, so there's that. And then let's see here, I have some routines. I have, an, so Noodler's, I don't know if you were here for when this happened, but Noodler's army green got reformulated and it became like just like a forest green and not like olive green and because nathan i guess had gotten some feedback that it should be more of a forest green and then when that happened i forget when this was maybe it was three years ago maybe it was longer but um everybody like freaked out and was like this is an army green it's like a forest green and so i gave him that feedback and he was like all right well i'll change it back <laughs> so we change it back so this is the changed formulation that he did like one batch of it. Um, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, the one that I think is going to be most interesting to you, uh, the original Noodler's 41 Brown, because that was reformulated as well. So I've got like all this weird, obscure stuff. Um, I do have Blue Upon the Plains of Abraham. So, and I believe this is original formula. So. Yeah, yours looks a lot more purple than mine does. Yeah, well we should, we can swap them up. We can play with that in just a second. Um, I also have, uh, which one is this? Prime of the Commons which I'm sure you've heard of. That's a popular UK series one. Um, and then I have two that I think are gonna be particularly interesting to you. One of which is, you're familiar with the Water Race inks, the whiteboard marker, mm -hmm. uh, you know, kind of ink. He made an invisible Water Race <laughs> ink. So you put it on a whiteboard and you can't see it except under UV light. <laughs> Why? I thought you'd find that particularly interesting. <laughs> so if you want, I guess, like, leave secret messages <laughs> on specifically whiteboard. Specifically whiteboard, <laughs> where you also have to have a black light. Like, who, sh who regularly shines a black light on a whiteboard? I don't know. I mean, maybe if you're throwing, like, a midnight rave or something, it could be particularly interesting. So I thought, I thought that was fun. And then I also have, this is, like, the only bottle in existence. We, when we originally came out with Noodler's Liberty's Elysium, we got some criticism that it wasn't permanent enough. And, uh, and I talked to Nathan about it and I said, hey, people, you were calling it bulletproof because that's what he, he said, it's bulletproof. People said, it's not fully bulletproof. So I was like, okay. So I talked to Nathan and I was like, can we try to mess around with the formulation, see if we can make it fully bulletproof? And he was like, I can do that, but I don't think you're gonna like what it does to the shading and the permanent, and the, and the, like the vibrancy of the color and all that. So he reformulated, this is the reformulated, more permanent version of Liberty's Elysium, 
but it basically just kind of ends up looking like, um, uh, what's the one? I can't remember the, the blue. Uh, it ends up looking like basically a flatter blue. It kind of looks like an eternal blue. Mm -hmm. So like it kills the vibrancy of the color, it kills the shading, and it like soaks into the paper more and just kind of looks flat. So I didn't really like it. We did a blog post on it when we came out with both. And, uh, but anyway, that's the, the weird formulation of Liberty's Elysium that I have. It's the only bottle in existence. So I guess Written in Nathan's handwriting, it says sample for Brian. Wow. With his little scribbling there. So it's got this unlabeled bottle sample for Brian. Um, so I hang on to weird, obscure stuff like this that like doesn't even mean anything to anybody probably except me, but or maybe you because you're super into this stuff. <laughs> I think that's really it's one of those things that like it makes me think about um, Color of the King, which was a Noodlers exclusive mm. that he did for the Raleigh Penn Show in uh, like 2008 or something, and he only okay. made ten bottles of it. Oh gosh! And that's it. I've seen like writing samples of it online, but okay. I never a chance of finding it probably yeah because like i'm sure like people will go to a show like that and he'll have like 10 bottles and they'll pick one up not realizing it's like one of the only 10 bottles that will ever be in existence so they probably use it and we're like yeah this color is okay and they just like get rid of it or just <laughs> you know i'm sure that happened a lot with some of the early noodlers inks you know what i mean yeah but i mean like something like that is just like this is this is something that probably no one else will ever see in yeah. you know, a noodler's ink. And I think that there's something really, really interesting about that. For sure. So let's swab up the blue blonde paint plan to Abraham, because I want to see what yours looks like versus mine. And we can use it, we got little uh the little goodlay cards here, so you can take that one. I'll let you swab up one, I'll swab up the other. On our little turtle. Alright, so that's yours, this is mine. Give a little shake because mine has been sitting here for a while. I can tell you that much. How do you feel about shaking inks? Because I know that's somewhat of a controversial thing. Some people are like, you never shake an ink. I always shake my ink. I'd... Always? Always, yeah. Okay. Well, especially for noodlers, it can be a little... Uh, there, can, there can be some sediment sometimes or some settling. Cause Could be, because the they're like are super, super saturated. Yeah, Yeah. so I, sure. I like to make sure that it's in it's in good shape before okay. I, uh, I put it... You know, put it okay, in so immediately let's like look let's look at the cap. Look at the difference between oh, those two. It's beautiful. So it, these are gonna look pretty different, I think, on paper. So we'll have to check them out. Brian, where's, yeah. the, where's the Brian's? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Andy. <laughs> All right, so to get this thing nice and saturated. And I had I had gotten this like from an actual Canadian, like someone in Canada <laughs> sent me this. Because it, they knew I liked blue inks, so big reveal, Micah. Nice. Okay. Whoa, that changes color real quick. So these cards are like somewhat absorbent, so I would expect that it would kind of look like that. All right, go. All right, now this one. Wow. A little more That's intense color. That's completely different. And you can see it's got like this pink kind of like Ooh. thing going on with it, right? Wow. But it's like so thick, like it's really hard to write with in a pen, personally. Isn't that wild though? They're completely different colors. Let's grab Tome away because I feel like that might even show it better. Let's read it. This is so obscure, like we're, just, <laughs> we're talking about something that people can't even get. You guys like, are jerks. You guys are. <laughs> just the worst. I actually asked customer care yesterday. I was like, am I going to, is like, are we going to get all these questions about these obscure inks? And Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry ahead of time. Boom. Look at that. Isn't that crazy? Isn't this the craziest looking thing you've it's, ever seen? It's beautiful. I'm actually like pretty jealous about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's really what I wanted to do is make Micah super <laughs> jealous today. <You're> like, nee, 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 nee. Okay. But no, man, you know this is out there. Original formulation. Another rabbit hole for you to crawl down. I know. <laughs> so what uh, what pens do you like to use regularly? I mean, you got these obscurings, but you're not using these. Are you using these like on a regular basis in your pens? Almost all the time, yeah. Really? So like, this is, these are your ink colors of choice? Yeah. Rock on, Pretty man. Much, yeah. I got respect. See, I'm like, I get obscure stuff like this, and I'm like, I don't ever want to use it because I know that once it's gone, it's gone. I'll normally like ink a pen, it's kind of like what you were saying I'm talking about yesterday, like I'll ink up using the same color maybe once or twice, okay. and I'm like, I have all these other colors, you I want to try this one now. Okay, yeah, yeah. okay. But I'm the same way with food as well, that like I, I'll, I'll go somewhere and I'll get the same thing every time. 
Yeah. And I'll I'll like consider I'm like so maybe you like, should get something else. And they're like, ah, but I but really I know want that club. I love exactly. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> and to follow up, I did go to Mission Barbecue yesterday, and I did get the burnt end brisket, <laughs> and it was amazing. And I've gotten that every time I've gone now, and I keep hearing good things about the salmon. It's funny because I went and watched right now from yesterday and and uh, with Rachel and because she hadn't seen it. She doesn't watch all of them, but she did watch yesterday's. And uh, as, have you been to Mission? You've been to Mission. I haven't, no. You've never been to Mission? Oh, my gosh. I know. Okay. Dude, you got to go. It's so good. Um, but anyway, so Rachel was like, oh, what about the salmon? And then like 10 seconds later, I was like, and I've heard the salmon is good. And I was like, <laughs> Rachel and I are so like, we spend too much time together. So, um, so what kind of pens do you like to use on a regular basis? I see you brought a couple. I did. I brought a couple. Um, I brought an Edison Nouveau Premier. This was the Midnight Thunder. Nice. So the fall exclusive from like two years ago or so. Yes. Um, is beautiful. I just, I saw it. It's a good it one. Smitten. I like that one. Um, and the name too. Was just Midnight like, Thunder. I know. Like it was like it was like the name of a Gatorade color from the '90s or something. <laughs> it has this epic '90s uh, <laughs> video on YouTube. You should just go, just go onto YouTube and look up Gatorade Midnight Thunder. And you can see the commercial. It's fantastic. So '90s. It's great. And I love like Sarah's pictures of them. That was like the rainy window, and it was oh, the, the yeah. pen, and it's like it's beautiful. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, I really loved it. And then this is in. Mueller's Conrad Acrylic. Yeah. Um, so not the, I guess the, not the normal Ebonite. Yeah, the resin or an Ebonite one. Yeah, this is, so um, this is more like what you would expect from like an Edison, same kind of acrylic. Yeah, um, so I uh, I generally, I, when I first started using fountain pens, I was just completely team stub noob. I refused to use anything that was not a stub noob. Okay, um, I kind of started out that way too. Yeah, and uh, as of in my older age now, in the in past wiser years, years. And in my wiser years, <laughs> I've actually kind of switched more to broads. Oh, um, interesting. Just because I like the like the tipping material still okay. being on it, so you kind of get that really buttery like feeling, but mm. it's still like a nice big line and a lot of ink. Okay. And you get to really see the ink. Nice. Um, so yeah, I, I also really like flex nibs because I have terrible handwriting. Okay. And flex nibs kind of cheat and make my handwriting look a lot better than it actually really? is. Okay, interesting. <laughs> How about that? See, that's why I liked stubs when I first started out. It's because you kind of like fake calligraphy a little bit. You don't have to <laughs> do anything different, but it looks fancier. It does, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's interesting. So, I see, I've gone kind of the same route. I started out, I was like all stubs. Like first year I used fountain pens, that's pretty much all I wanted to use. And then I kind of like, I went to broads, and then I kind of went the other spectrum. I started, I'm, I'm enjoying fines more now. Just more as like my everyday carry pens. But I find like when I write like thank you notes like this, I'm like, the wetter the better. Like just give me the biggest, broadest, wettest thing I can find. It's great. You know? Yeah, yeah. Just love it. Because you, you want to show off the ink, you know? Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. You want to see how beautiful it is. Especially these crazy inks that are so much fun to use. I can see why you want to show those off. Yeah, and, and especially like people who like just don't ever use fountain pens have no idea. They're like, whoa, that's beautiful. What is that? I'm like, ah, oh, that's Emerald of Shibor. It's beautiful. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and, you, and then you start explaining like noodlers and like, there's this guy in his house <laughs> in Boston. And just like the, the story behind it. And people are just like, you're weird. This is too much for me. So you know, start talking about inks like Burning Red or something. Just like all oh, these yeah. really interesting inks that he's done. And you're like, what is this? We're like, what are you even talking about? Right. I just use G2s. Right. So I'm like, well, you have great taste in them. And there there you go. Also, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> cool, Michael. Thanks for coming on, man. This has been a blast. Thank you for having me. All right. Thanks, everybody. Hope See you enjoyed ya. it. Right on.